So as we continue our discussion on DNA replication in this next flowchart entitled DNA Replication 3, we're going to be looking at, let me just rewrite this, DNA Replication 1, 2, 3, our third flowchart. We're going to continue look at, continuing to be looking at the semi-conservative model of replication. So semi-conservative replication. But like I said, there are two parts to semi-conservative replication. Initiation, which is what we covered in our previous video, and now we're going to be looking at number two, which is elongation. Elongation, we're going to be giving a very broad, simple definition of this, just like we did for initiation, as the following. Elongation is the nucleotide monomers, is when nucleotide monomers are added in an orderly fashion, are added to growing strand in an orderly fashion. I think it's very interesting that orderly is the uh, correct term here, orderly, orderly fashion. Because this is a very a complex process that results in a very orderly fashion of adding monomers. Because remember, nucleotides are those base pairs that we're going to be adding on, like A, T, C, and G, over and over and over again in order to elongate our growing strand. Our growing strand has a template, which is the parent strand, and we're going to use that template to grow off of it, to add nucleotides. Specifically, a couple of things we need to understand about elongation. Number one, is that it is always, absolutely always, do not forget this, always, always, always going in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. Always, let's say, added. What we mean by added is nucleotide monomers are always added 5 prime to 3 prime, thus the growing strand always grows 5 prime to 3 prime. Always grows 5 prime to 3 prime. This leads us to this final conclusion that we're going to always be going to doing the following. We link a 5' prime PG, meaning phosphate group, of new nucleotide, I'll just say new nucleotide, to a 3' prime OH on parent. So I think the best way to understand this is, of course, to look at the YouTube videos. Uh, it really shows a great way to understand this, but what you have to imagine is the parent strand will have a 3' prime end, and will also have a 5' prime end. And what's going to happen is this growing, elongating strand that's going to be happening has to start somewhere. It has to start either at the 5' prime end or at the 3' prime end. But what you have to understand is that in order to grow 5' prime to 3', prime, you have to complementarily start at the complement side. So the complement to the 3' prime is the 5', prime, and thus you'll have growth 5' prime to 3'. Prime. This is what we're looking at in elongation. This is the new uh, strand being made off of our parent template strand. Do not underestimate the difficulty behind understanding this. It's a very important concept. Moving forward, in order for this to happen, we're going to be utilizing some energy as well, and this energy will be utilized in the form of something called nucleoside triphosphate. Nucleoside triphosphate. So we've seen adenosine triphosphate, ATP. We're now going to be looking at a different form of energy called nucleoside triphosphate. Nucleosides are simply monomers with the following. The nucleoside triphosphate is a monomer with a nucleoside, that should be very obvious, and also with three phosphate groups, so three PGs, three phosphate groups. What is a nucleoside? A nucleoside is simply a sugar combined to a nitrogenous base of some sort, and the three phosphate groups are going to be the triphosphate on this. But what's the point of these phosphate groups? Remember, phosphate groups, phosphorylation, provides a ton of energy. It's a way that cells, pro that cellular processes are primed for beginning, primed to start, primed to react. So what you're going to do with these three phosphate groups is you're going to actually remove two. So two are going to be removed. And when you remove two, you actually get energy. This actually, this removal of two phosphate groups from a nucleoside triphosphate energy molecule provides energy for, let's say, elongation reactions. So this is our energetic source, elongation 
reactions. Because remember, we're trying to add nucleotide monomers. Nucleoside triphosphate is a nucleoside that has the, the sugar and the base that's going to come in, and it's also going to have three phosphate groups. It's going to give those two phosphate groups up in order for it to make sure that it latches on uh, correctly onto this five prime to three prime growing end. So those lines that I just drew are nucleotides, but they start off as nucleoside triphosphates. They donate and give up those two phosphate groups in order to latch on, much like I drew here. Moving forward, another very important, I think the most important player in all of this is something called DNA polymerase, another very important enzyme. Lots of enzymes you have to remember. We're going to do a summary at the end of uh, the DNA replication altogether. So DNA polymerase is something I would absolutely understand. Specifically, DNA polymerase is an incredible enzyme, one of my favorites. It's an enzyme that does something very special, that complementarily, complementarily, that's a word, um, adds bases to the parent strand. To, um, not the parent strand, excuse me, the parent strand is okay, it's fine, it's a parent strand, it has everything it needs, to the parent template. Because remember, complementary strand adds bases to this guy right here. So let's not even say the parent strand adds bases, um, I think bases to new strand via parent template. Via parent template. I think that's a better way to understand that. So you have a parent template here that's going to be like, let's say, A, T, C, G. And over here, you're going to have the exact opposite. If this is A, T, C, G, you're going to have T, A, G, and C, right? So for that reason, you are looking at an enzyme that can add these thymine, this adenine, this guanine, and cytosine complementarily to the growing strand. So DNA polymerase is the guy who adds the stuff. Very important enzyme. Also, it's important to understand this rule is about to be applied to DNA polymerase, the 5' prime to 3' prime rule. Specifically, DNA polymerase is an enzyme that absolutely only works, only works in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. It only works 5' prime to 3' prime, but students often get confused because it has this ability what people say is that DNA polymerase works 5' prime to 3' prime and reads, when it's reading a parent strand, it's reading that parent strand 3' prime to 5'. Prime. What does that mean? Well, let's imagine this is our parent strand. I'm going to have a DNA polymerase molecule. Let's just draw a square. Imagining that's our DNA polymerase molecule. It's going to grow 5' prime to 3', prime, right? It's going to add on these bases that are right there. And as it adds on these bases, how is it reading the parent strand? The parent strand is 3' prime to 5' prime. Reads 3' prime to 5' prime template, let's say. While it adds 5' prime to 3'. Prime. So if you're confused by this, I understand. You should definitely look at a video that very clearly exemplifies this. Look at the YouTube playlists that are on the site. Moving forward, um, we have to make sure that DNA polymerase, it actually has sort of a, a prerequisite, which is a, sort of limits it, but it's important to understand. In the sense that DNA polymerase only adds, only, so it has some stipulations, only adds to an existing strand, to an existing strand. So this doesn't make much sense. How could DNA polymerase, the the enzyme responsible for adding these bases add to something that's not existing because it's saying that the requisite, the prerequisite, is that something has to be there for DNA polymerase to work off of. So what you have to imagine is you have this parent strand, right, with these complementary bases, and you need something to work off of in order for, let's say, the new strand that DNA polymerase is going to be making. But this doesn't just happen. There has to be something called a primer. It needs a little bit of help. So I'm going to draw the primer as a totally new color, as this orange color. You see this primer that I just drew here? In order for DNA polymerase to work, which we denoted by a square enzyme, we're going to draw another square enzyme right here. It's going to see this primer. It's called RNA primer. And then it's going to add on those blue nucleotides that we're talking about. Okay? It's going to add on those blue nucleotides. So, um, let's just reiterate, it only adds to an existing strand. So this is the existing portion, this orange thing that I drew here. Somehow, some way, that orange RNA primer gets added on. 
more specifically, we can state that DNA polymerase, I think, to, I like to think of it as uh, the fact that it needs some help. And how does it get help? It gets help through a primer. So it needs primer, something to prime it to start, something to prime it to do its job. Um, and we're going to continue our discussion on elongation in the next video. We're running a little short on time. I want to make sure we cover everything in a short span so that the videos get, don't get too long. So overall, we've established in this first part to DNA replication elongation. We always go 5' prime to 3'. Prime. We have nucleoside triphosphates that provide these phosphate groups for the energy for all these reactions. And we have DNA polymerase, the major enzyme involved in elongation that uses complementary base pairing uh, addition in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction in order to work off of an already existing strand that shows up through a primer. We're going to see in our next video how that primer shows up and we'll conclude by looking at the replication fork.